played by more people the world over than any other sport. You guessed it, tennis. It looks like work, doesn't it? But tennis means fun, entertainment, exercise, and many more enjoyable experiences to more than nine million Americans. In fact, today there are more tennis players in America than golfers. What is the fascination about tennis that makes it such a popular sport? Maybe it's because we're living in an age of speed, of keen competition. And this sport, tennis, fits in well with today's pace of living. Young people are taking to tennis in a big way. It's where the action is. And tennis is not demanding in the amount of time it takes to play. 30 minutes or three hours. You and your partner decide. With the emphasis in America today on physical fitness, tennis offers exercise strenuous enough for maintaining good physical conditioning. Another strong appeal tennis offers, especially to the budget-minded, is that it's relatively inexpensive. About $25 for a racket, $3 for balls, and $9 more or less for a pair of shoes, and you're in business. For another $20, you're dressed for a center court appearance at Wimbledon. Whatever the reasons, everyone is playing tennis. From the very young, to the over 60 sport. Teens play it, housewives play it, executives play it, even celebrities play it. A man who has taught many celebrities to master the game is professional Tommy Cook of Beverly Hills. Out here on the coast, tennis has really caught on as a participating sport. It's been my pleasure and privilege to have coached some of the Hollywood greats, such as Rod Steiger, Barbara Rush, Ava Gabor, the Dean Martin family, Mr. Ed Ames. And I'm particularly proud to have coached young Dino Martin, Jr. He's now recognized as one of the leading juniors in the state of California. Some of the super greats of show business are avid tennis players, the likes of Charlton Heston, Ephraim Zimbalist, Jr., Robert Stack, Robert Wagner, Mr. Tarzan himself, Ron Ely, my very good friend, Miss Connie Hines from the Mr. Ed Show. And, of course, Miss Myrna Hansen, the beautiful former Miss United States of America. I think these uh, great stars uh, play the game of tennis just as hard as they take on their acting chores. You see, they realize the value of proper conditioning. And they realize how important the right diet is in keeping physically fit. Just as tennis is the sport for a lifetime, so orange juice is the drink for a lifetime. As Tommy Cook says, Conditioning is important, and Florida orange juice is important in conditioning. This game of tennis, where does one learn to play it? Wherever there are public and private tennis courts, there is usually a tennis training course available. Clinics, that's the popular word to describe them. Tennis coach Lef Carroll, formerly of Bergen City, New Jersey, teaches under the warm Florida sun in Jacksonville. Instructors like Lef are readily available to teach all age groups in cities and towns all over America. As one Midwestern coach put it, as long as you can stand up, swing a racket, and see, you can learn to play tennis. Warren Woodcock, former Davis Cup star, is an outstanding tennis teacher. Warren divides his time between Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Forest Hills, New York. Let's listen to some tennis tips from a man who knows the game well. Tennis is one of the few games in which you have to concentrate intently and relax at the same time. Let us go through some of the basic strokes with some of my students. To put the ball in play, the player serves. He positions himself with his left shoulder facing the direction he is serving with his feet placed 18 inches apart. He holds the racket with a backhand grip. The serve starts with the top up. The ball must be lofted slowly with the left hand 
as it is important to hit the ball at the top of the throw. The wrist breaks, enabling the racket to drop down your back. Without stopping in the swing, the racket head snaps up at the ball, propelling it across the net to your opponent's court. Now, don't stop when you have made contact, but carry on the swing following through down across your body. When playing a point, you are allowed two serves. So serve aggressively on your first serve. If a second serve is needed, try to use a little spin for safety. The service will be returned either by a forehand ground shot or a backhand ground shot, depending on the placement of the serve. The forehand is a shot performed when the ball comes to the right of your body. The grip for the forehand is like shaking hands with the racket. Notice that the thumb is around the grip and the index finger is separated from the other fingers like a trigger finger. The moment you see the ball coming on your forehand, the left hand leaves the racket head, goes up and out to your side, beginning a fairly small loop. Drop the racket down in the back position to the height the ball will be at the point of impact. As the ball reaches a point almost out from the left knee, we thrust the racket forward towards the ball. We follow through, finishing with the right hand as far forward as possible. The other ground shot is the backhand. From the ready position, which I'm now in, you slip the grip slightly to the left. The butt of your hand covers the top of the handle of the racket. As you see the ball coming on the backhand side, use the left hand to pull the racket well back. In the back position, the elbow will still be bent. The right arm will be kept close to your body. As the ball arrives, we throw the racket out at the ball, which should be about three feet to the side. The arm and the racket move together, finishing with the racket pointing towards your opponent. Both the forehand and the backhand is always hit with a firm grip. However, do not tighten the grip until just before connecting with the ball. Now let's demonstrate the technique of the volley. Note how fast the reflexes need to be for this shot hit before the ball bounces. The volley is principally a short punch hit with the racket head, always above the wrist at approximately a 45 degree angle. I suggest you use the same grips as on the ground shots. On low balls, open the face of the racket for elevation of your shot, but keep the head of the racket above the wrist. The ability to hit a good lob marks the finished player, and this stroke is used to place the ball over the head of the opponent, who at the time is close to the net. The overhead smash is performed with the same action as the serve. Note that in these shots, most good players grip the racket longer so that they get a little higher trajectory for the shot and are able to use more wrist movement. Proper instructions from professionals like Warren Woodcock are essential if you want to learn to play the game of tennis well. Now, let's watch as one of the game's leading pros executes the moves described by Warren. Here is Cliff Drysdale of South Africa in action. Here is Cliff's serve. Now, a forehand ground shot. Next, a backhand ground shot. Notice Drysdale's quick moves in the volley. Up next, the overhead smash. Let's listen now as Cliff Drysdale tells what he thinks is the most important part of playing tennis. Probably the most important thing of all is when you're out on the court and you're actually hitting the ball with your opponent is to watch the ball. After all, the ball is the most important thing. It doesn't matter where you're your feet can be in the right position and your shoulder can be in the right position, but if you're not watching the ball, then you can't hit it. 
One of the best young tennis players in the country today is Nicky Kalo. Well, I think uh, the serve is one of the most important factors of the game. The ball must be hit at the top of the toes, and the motion should be smooth. This is a very important shot, and it needs a lot of work on it. This game of tennis is as popular with the ladies as it is with the men. A leading amateur is Alice Tim. Concentration is the most important single factor in the game. Coupled with a strong will to win, this quality produces winners. Good concentration begins an hour or more before the match and does not terminate until the last point is finished. Those who play tennis for keeps agree on the basic ingredient for being a winner, good physical condition. Jamie Fiol is a consistent winner in amateur circles. He realized the importance of conditioning while playing on the University of Miami tennis team. Another top player concerned about proper conditioning is Edson Mandarino, former member of the Brazilian Davis Cup team. You need a lot of running and exercise to be a good player. There are some examples of tennis players who are a very good tennis player, but they don't have the right exercise of running during the days, during the trainings. Warren Woodcock is a devout believer in proper conditioning. I personally feel very strongly about the importance of diet for proper conditioning of the tennis player. I'm a great believer in natural foods rather than synthetics. Most teenagers do not eat properly. They load themselves with snacks during the day and eat the wrong kinds of foods at mealtime. Too many sweets and synthetic beverages. I recommend fruit instead of rich pastries and candy. Use honey as a sweetener. Drink Florida orange juice instead of artificially flavored soft drinks. So there you have it. From the professionals who make their living teaching and playing tennis. So much of the enjoyment and success of tennis rests with the individual player. After learning the fundamentals, he must practice, get in shape, and stay in shape with exercise and proper diet. Then he derives full enjoyment out of participating in America's fastest growing sport, tennis.